So in today's video, we will talk about what is the rule of thumb to implement BGP, Border Gateway Protocol, and then the difference between an eBGP versus IBGP. And when you implement two or more BGP routers in a given AS, <clears throat> What do you need to do, right? And why do you need to do it? So given the topology that you see here, uh, you have a BGP AS123 that has three routers, okay? And one of them has got an eBGP connection, external BGP connection to another router, the WIOS1, that is peering with BGP Autonomous System 100. So if the Autonomous System is different, it's gonna be an eBGP peering. If the Autonomous System is same for the peering of the routers in BGP, it's gonna be an internal BGP connection. So that's easy, but it's not that easy. <clears throat> you have to understand one more thing that when an IBGP advertisement happens, and this guy advertises a route, for example, 123, 333 slash 23. Just imagine this is a data center. Here's another data center connected to a RAN router, connecting to a US headquarters, connecting to a European headquarters, and we have a data center here with 100. Everybody needs to talk to everybody, right? So what's what you need to make sure when you're implementing BGP or at least from a BGP perspective is that when you advertise a route in one data center, he is going to advertise to his peer, which is this guy, through IBGP. And you would assume that being a dynamic routing protocol, this router is just gonna automatically advertise to this router, which in case of BGP, it would not. Uh, in OSPF, EHRP, or any other IGP, this would happen. But in the case of BGP, this does not dynamically happen. You have to explicitly configure that or have a full mesh between all IBGP peers. So the concept of having a full peer, full mesh between IBGP needs to be understood. Let's just see the illustration here. So we advertise 123.333. What he's going to do, he's going to give it to this guy, and VOS 1 1 will not give it to VOS 2 2. And only VOS 1 will learn it. So the rule of BGP advertisement, as I remember it, is essentially the fact that you would. Remember it like this. If an I, I, I remember it by IE, E, all. That's all I need to remember, right? If you get an IBGP update, you by default give it to BG, EBGP peers. If you get an eBGP update, you give it to all your peers. So in this case, and when this guy advertises 123.333, he's gonna to advertise to his IBGP peer or the only peer that he's got. He will receive this advertisement as I. And when he receives this advertisement as I, IBGP, advertisement, he's going to give it to only eBGP peers, which is this guy. He's not going to give it to this guy, right? And if this guy, eBGP, if he gets an eBGP advertisement, this guy gets an eBGP advertisement, which in this case we'll see in 100-111, when Vios1 advertises as an eBGP advertisement, when he gets it, he will give it to all which means 100, the advertisement for 100 
slash 1.1.1 will go this way as well as this way by default, okay? Therefore, <clears throat> for this guy to make sure that he his advertisement gets to him, V2, you need to have a connection, an IBGP connection between them two. So this is going to be an IBGP peer again. That's why all IBGP peer needs to be in a full mesh. And then when your BGP speakers or IBGP speakers becomes large in scale, you use the concepts of route reflectors and confederations and all that good stuff. But in a small setup, doing a full BG, IBGP mesh is not a biggie. In this case, we have not done a full IBGP mesh. All right, so let's see what we would have to do to get this thing working. My eraser can erase. There you go. Okay. So now <clears throat> we will learn how this thing works. To do that, we set this up. I've got this configured with VOS 1, VOS 1.1, 1, 1, VOS 3.1, and VOS 2.1. In this fashion, three routers are in BGP AS 123, and one router is in BGP AS 100. All of them have a dummy interface that is configured with these addresses. Now let's go advertise this guy, 123.33, in this guy, and see what happens. <clears throat> All right. Now remember, there's no IBGP peer between VOS 3.1 and VOS 2.1. So we go there in our VOS routers. This is our VOS 3.1. That's our 2.1. That's our 1. And that's our middle router. So we've got our BGP ASS configured. Run show IP BGP summary. We have 100 as an external BGP peer up. We have 123 as these two. And we are configured as 123 ourselves, right on this middle router here, BGP, EBGP pairing router. This guy should have only one pair. If it does, this guy should have only one pair. And this guy should have only one pair. And if you follow it closely, you would learn a lot of good concepts here, how BGP works. BGP works very differently than other routing protocols. So the first rule of thumb is you gotta have IBGP full mesh. Otherwise, it, the advertisements will be broken, right? So this guy is not learning anything right now. <clears throat> show IP BGP, got nothing. Run show IP route, got only connected. Run show IP route got only connected run show IP route got only connected run show IP route got only connected run show IP interface interfaces run show interfaces we got a dummy interface 123.333 let's advertise that set protocol BGP 123 is my AS network is going to be 123 and remember, BGP takes a while by default to advertise or do anything. It's just designed to be a stable protocol, not quick. You can make it quick. So here's the command to advertise the network. And if I do show run, run show IP BGP, it 
I can see it's advertising, but it's going to take a while to get it. I did. So now I've got 123.333 from my neighbor, right? And you would assume that this guy would get it automatically. And he does not, even though he's belonging to the same AS, but he did, the external guy. See that? So now that basically proves to you that you need to have a full IBGP peer, otherwise this BGP peer will not even give it to his own peer. So you need to have this guy as a IBGP full mesh or configure this guy, US11, US11 to be a route reflector. So that's straightforward stuff. Now, now we're gonna have to Let's just say that we want to get 123. So that's the, the IBGP rule right now. Let's let's take a look at the EBGP rule. EBGP basically says IE E all. So now E all means if I advertise my show run run show interface, if I advertise my dummy interface 100 111, it should get to both of both of these routers. So let's do that. This one is a 1.4, so the advertisement command is a little different than one point, uh, prior to 1.4. In VIOS, so it's set protocol BGP, and you basically do a local AS, which is not available on the earlier releases, so you don't do it since I've already configured it. And then you say network, advertise family, I'm sorry, IPv4. Unicast Network 100. That's how you do it in 1.4 or later releases. Commit run show IP BGP. Wow, it took a while. And here's I am advertising it. So he should get it. <clears throat> he got it. And now look what happens. Oh, he didn't get, oh, he did get it, 100, 101, he got it. So look what happens. He got it. And he should get it too. Run show IP BGP. He got it too. Now he's not putting these routes. Now here's another thing for BGP, right? You saw that it's in the BGP table, show IP BGP table, show IP BGP. Both are learning the route that is coming from outside the external. So E off, right? By default, this guy advertises both, but it does not get populated in the routing table. That's another thing that you gotta keep an eye on. BGP, show IP route. I don't see that route, it's in my BGP table. It's in my BGP table, but it doesn't have this arrow. That means I don't I can't reach the next top. See? Next top is say, it's saying that to reach this prefix, I need to go, I need to be able to reach to 11002. Do I have this route? Run show IP. I do not, I don't know where 11 is. So I'm getting a BGP update, but I can't reach it. Same thing here, right? I can, I got the BGP update. I'm not going to populate it until I can reach it. So 11002, I don't have that routing table in my routing table. I don't have 11, so I can't populate this. So the next BGP rule is that besides the fact that it works like this, the advertisement works like this, there is a next hop concept in BGP that you have to make sure of or it is taken care of. So let's take care of that. So the router or the BGP speaker that's receiving that route, he's directly connected to 11. So he gets it, right? He gets it. But now he needs to do this. He needs to point towards his peers and say, next top self. So I'm gonna do edit protocol BGP 123 show. I've got basically I've configured an EBGP and two IBGP. Now for the two IBGP, this guy and this guy, I'm gonna do a next top self. Neighbor, set neighbor. Twelve, or let's say thirteen. Next top self. I don't think there's anything else. Set neighbor 
12, next top cell, commit. All right. Typically, if you don't configure soft inbound reconfiguration, you would have to reset your peers. You got this coming in now. It wasn't coming in, but setting it to next top self. Now your, your next top is 1301 instead of 11. Now do show, run show IP BGP. The next top has changed, which is a directly connected interface. And now you can reach it. Same thing here. Bingo. So now next top self is the other concept. First concept of BGP was IEEL. Second one was next top because next top is, you know, is not reachable. The workaround for next top is obviously to do redistribute connected. That's a lot of people do, but if you got a lot of point to point links and redistribute connected becomes a huge routing table. So you typically do next top self instead of redistribute connected. So that's next top self with BGP. Now, how do we fix? So you, you've learned the IE and E all right now. Now, how do I fix the advertisement of 123? Because I still don't have 123, 333 in my routing table. So, right, so that the way to do that is configure this guy. Either you do a direct peering between these two, or you do a route reflector. So let's just do a route reflector. Set protocol, I'm already in BGP protocol, so set neighbor. Show. Set neighbor 12. Route reflector client, enter. And then set neighbor 13, route reflector client, commit. Let's see if I get 123.333 here now. And it may take a while, or we may even have to reset the BGP peers. Okay. Run a show IP BGP. 123.33 is here. Now, same problem. 123.333, I get it in BGP, right? It's not getting populated because why? 13.003 is not in my routing table. I don't know how to get to 13. So one more command. And that's right. Next top self. It already exists, okay? So I should be able to get that. So the catch here is again, you're getting this route 123.333, but your next top is not reachable. And that is another gotcha in BGP. Even though you have your next top self already configured it only works for ebgp advertiser not for ibgp so now what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to use either a static route or an igp like ospf to get this guy known to each other right so let me show you this example here so i'm going to advertise on show interfaces 123.222. And when I do that, he's going to give it to this guy and he's advertised, going to advertise it to him. Now that we got the route reflector going, he's going to advertise it to him. But the next top for this 122, 123.222 is uh, 12. So, and the 12 is not learned or he doesn't know. So you're going to have to enable static, either static routes or OSPF. So let's just configure static routes for now. Ideally, in a network like this, you're going to have OSPF running. So if you want, we can just do OSPF. It's going to take a little while to do that. Well, let's just do OSPF. It's very straightforward. Set protocol, OSPF, 
area zero network. Our network here is 13. Commit. And this guy is a set, we need to get out of BGP, set protocol, OSPF area zero network 13 slash 24. And I also have 12. And OSPF also takes time by default. Because it tries to learn the DR, BDR. Workaround for that is to set the interfaces to be point to point. Area zero network. 12. Now let's see if our OSPF is coming up. It's in two way other, not completely full. Wait for OSPF to come up. One neighbor came up. Second one taking time. There it is. The second one came up too. If it came up, then my BGP route should get populated because I am now able to reach the next hop. So show IP BGP. Now I can see that I have arrows because I can now reach the addresses. Run show IP BGP. I can reach 123 through 13 because 13 is in my routing table. Run show IP route. Run show IP route. 13, I'm running through OSPF. So now, if I advertise, so my advertisement is now reachable. And then if I want to advertise, run show IP BGP, I am not advertising anything. I want to advertise it. Run show interface. Let's advertise this guy and he's going to run 123.333. Run show IP route. I don't have 123. 222, 222 is my network here, interface directly connected. So I'm gonna advertise that set protocol BGP network, 123 network, 123.222 slash 32, commit. He's gonna by default give it to him. He's gonna advertise it to him. And in this case, now that we have route reflectors configured, we have uh, OSPF going for next hop. I should be able to get 122, 222 without any problem here. Bingo. So now I'm getting 122, 22 with BGP, not OSPF, because I'm just using OSPF for next hop. So that's the interaction between OSPF and BGP that you got to keep in mind that you're advertising OSPF routes transit routes and th this is just imagine that this is a stub which obviously it is because it's a slash 32 it's a host route so you're getting bgp stub routes host routes through bgp but the transit routes are coming through ospf in this network if you look at the routing table of this guy he will automatically learn all the routes but he would He's going to 1101, so he should be able to reach all of them. And if he's not, that means 11 is not reachable by these guys because he's taking 11 as his source address. Run show IP route. I don't see 11 here. Run show IP route. I don't see 11 here. So when I ping the slash 32 host routes from these two routers, I'm not able to ping them <clears throat> because they're taking a source address of 11. Now I do have 100 as BGP advertisement from this guy, 100. So let me see if I can source it. I think King 123, 
222 interface, that's the command for F source 100. There you go. So now if I source it with my loopback, they have, they have the address source. So now I'm not taking 11 by default. See that? If I don't source it with my dummy interface, I won't be able to ping. But if I'm sourcing with my dummy interface that is getting advertised, they know where, where this source address is, right? I can reach it. I can also reach 333. There we go. So <clears throat> in this video now to summarize, we learn how BGP advertisement work for you to make IBGP learn by IBGP peers, you got to either do a full mesh or a route reflector, which we did. You also need to take care of next top self for EBGP advertisement. You all, and you also have to make sure your next top for or your IGP, your IGP like OSPF is taking care of your transit links because if you to reach these BGP advertisement like 123.333 to him, he needs to be able to reach the 1300 network and, and vice versa. So this video kind of summarizes at a high level. This is just the BGP advertisement, how it works. Pretty um, straightforward, but very different than a typical uh, routing protocol. And then obviously BGP has features like tra ingress traffic, egress traffic, which I have the video on already. But this video covers IBGP, EBGP and summarizes how you can make the connectivity work uh, from a route reflector slash transit link connectivity. Hope this helps.